Good evening. Welcome back to the Cube's coverage of day one of Snowflake Summit 22, live from Caesars Forum in Las Vegas. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. Dave, we have had an action-packed day one. A lot of news coming out this morning. We've talked to Snowflake folks, we've talked to partners, we've talked to customers. A lot going on today. It's our light day. Tomorrow even gets more intense. I know, I'm a little scared. <laughs> we've got another partner of Snowflake's on board with us here. Please welcome Sudhir, let me, let me get this, Chaturvedi. President and Executive Board Member at LTI. How did I do? Very, very well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. Welcome to the program. Tell us a little bit about you and then talk to the audience about LTI and what you're doing with Snowflake. Sure. So, you know, LTI is a global technology consulting and services firm. Uh, we're headquartered out of India. We're part of a large conglomerate, which is over 80 years old. Our founders were two Danish engineers who came to India and were essentially stuck when World War II broke out and they created a company that's lasted 80 years. So we're very proud of our heritage. We come from an engineering background and frankly, what we do with Snowflake is, is really bring that engineering DNA to Snowflake. Uh, so we are, uh, we've been a partner of Snowflake, we are an elite partner of Snowflake uh, and uh, we work with them across, across all regions in the world actually. 50 plus customers today, so we have great partnership with them. And you're, a, uh, I have a note here, it says you're the GSI delivery platform partner of the, of the year. Congratulations. Yeah. What does that entail? What are the requirements to, to get that award? Yeah, I know we are very proud uh, that we are the uh, delivery platform partner of the year this year. We were the innovation partner of the year last year. So it shows the journey from innovation to execution uh, in, uh, in showing delivery. I think what it entails is that we've been recognized for leadership and excellence in executing uh, Snowflake programs at scale, the migration programs and the implementation programs that we've done for customers across the globe. How, how did you, go take us back, how did you first find Snowflake? When did you decide to lean in yeah. as a company? Oh, it's a great question. Actually, you know, when we, in fact, when we, so we went public as a company in 2016, and uh, at that time, uh, you know, we, there wasn't, uh, let me hurry up a little politely, people weren't expecting that much of us. Uh, you know, they thought we'll be one, one amongst many other companies. And we, we decided that we'll vector the company on data, digital, and cloud, and we'll make bets on partners we, that are perhaps you know, unknown at that time. So in 20s, late 2017, early 2018, we started partnering with Snowflake. And since then, I must you know, hand it to Snowflake. We have a phenomenal partnership with them. I just met Frank this morning. Uh, Chris Degnan, who's their chief revenue officer, Colin Capace, and all of these people have been tremendous uh, you know, in terms of how they work together with us uh, across the world uh, to bring this, what essentially is phenomenal technology to our clients. You know? What was so, the allure yeah. back then? It was you know, cloud data warehouse, simplified yeah. data warehouse, the technically splitting you know, storage from compute, you know, infinite, blah, blah, blah. What, was that the allure and saying, or did Actually, you, you have a broader was, vision? No, I think what happened was clients were struggling with data, you know, because data and applications in our world were sort of very in, tightly intertwined, and, and they weren't really leveraging data for making real-time decisions. So the moment we saw the promise of Snowflake that you can create true data on cloud, you know, which un, sort of all data on cloud, you know, what Frank was talking about this morning, and it's available in real time, and you can do a lot of things on it. We said, this is technology of the future, truly is, because it's, it separated storage and compute, it did many things that were not possible before. So I think the thing is, when you see promising technology, as a GSI, you always wonder, should we wait for it to be proven before we jump in? Right. Or should we jump in right up front and help them prove the model? And we decided to take the first approach where we jumped in right up front. Bet. <laughs> and I think that's helped us. Uh, yeah. Jumped in head first, pandemic hits, well, they go public, yeah. lots of stuff going on. Talk to us about how you're leveraging the, the power, this flywheel that Snowflake has created that I think is just getting bigger Absolutely. and faster. How are you leveraging the power of the technology to really deliver business outcomes for that's clients? Right. No, that's a great question. And the thing with, uh, you know, our initial focus was to get people onto, you know, data on cloud and, uh, you know, with Snowflake. Uh, but now it's really around driving business outcomes from there. So we have a, a, a suite called Phosphor, which is a data to decisions product suite, which is Snowflake ready. Uh, we've also launched Polar Sled 2, uh, which is based on business outcomes. So what we've done is we've identified, we've actually created about 155 North Stars. So various industry sectors, what, what business outcome do you want to achieve? We call that a North Star. 
And then we say, how do you achieve it with Snowflake? You know? So what we're doing is we're saying, let's achieve the business outcome. That's going to drive more consumption. But essentially, you know, we live in a difficult world, as increasingly difficult world. So we want to help people take better database decisions. Well, what, are your, what are some of the more interesting ways in which your clients are using Snowflake? Yeah, I think when I look at, you know, for example, we have a, a client in the financial services sector who was struggling with, you know, they're one of the largest asset management and fund management companies in the world. They're a household name, everybody knows them. And they probably have, a, you know, an EFT or a, 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 some sort of 401k with them. And what they were struggling with was to say, you know, how do I actually, sep you know, get various sources of data together in a way that I can make better asset, you know, better fund management decisions. Because otherwise it was left to a lot of very traditional equity research reporting and fund managers taking their expertise. Here, the data from multiple sources being available, running some AI ML routines on it, we're able to show them patterns in, you know, in, in various asset classes on, option, on, on investments that they ha hadn't seen before. And now that they've jumped headlong into it, their 15 of their units across the world are using it now. So I think the power of once you see data in action, it's, it's sort of, it's almost like you know, the superpower that uh, smart people get. You know? It's like, yeah, I know, like you suddenly arm them with so much more than they had previously, and then they get so much better at what they're doing. And ultimately, consumers like us benefit from that. So you know, that's really where we want to go. What, what's LTI's like, best sweet spot where you, know, you, you go, go into a client and you know, wow, this is a perfect fit for what we do. Yeah, so I, think, I would say banking and insurance is 47% of our business. Yeah. We really understand that business extremely well. Uh, we won, uh, the other aspect I'll add is because we come from a manufacturing heritage, uh, we've had that as well. And media is something we've done more recently. So, uh, you know, we've got uh, Media Cloud along with uh, with uh, uh, Snowflake. So I would say, you know, these are the sectors that we are, so we've been very domain focused as a client, as, an, as a company. You know, we've said domain first technology will, you know, we'll work with whatever technology the domain needs, but that's really been helpful uh, to us. Uh, all, uh, and this is where that whole point on North Star and Phosphor comes back in. Uh, and, you know, which is today, uh, I think without the data on cloud, you would have never achieved the kind of outcomes that we are able to achieve with our clients today. How did you feel about the recent sales pivot that Snowflake has made in terms of retail, but also healthcare and life sciences? Yeah. Talk to me about that, and how is that enabling your joint customers to really leverage yeah, the Yeah, no, I think it's very exciting. We, we are you know, working with clients on that. They like the new model. Uh, they're they're you know, looking forward to it. I think what clients are now doing is, you know, they're putting data perhaps ahead of even in these times where people are you know, looking at, you know, we're seeing seven or eight very difficult macroeconomic trends. People are wondering, you know, clients are wondering what's this going to mean for their business in the future. So they're looking at spends and saying, what do I prioritize? But what I find is that the data spend only goes up. You know, they don't, so you know, our own data practice has, has sort of grown fourfold in the last six years. You know? So it's been a, just an exponential growth for us. Uh, and essentially Snowflake is our largest bet in that space, uh, even over every other technology that's out there. So I think clients, when they see that, that combination of how Snowflake is changing and what we can bring to them, I think the model works well for them. You know, ecosystem is one of the areas that we always pay attention to. You can see, just look around. I mean, you compare 2019 to where we are today. What's the importance of ecosystem to LTI and how do you see it evolving? That's a great question. So you know, it's like, I think there's, uh, it's a, I think in About a Boy, you know, Hugh Grant says, there's no man is an island, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I think the same thing applies for companies. Any company, no matter what size they are, if they think that they can do everything themselves, then I think they're, they're not going to be successful in the long run. We believe that the ecosystem of partnerships is what drives all, you know, the best outcomes for our clients. And our clients expect that today. They want best of breed partners to work together. And the thing with an ecosystem is, you know, no one person can dominate an ecosystem. You know, uh, this, the customer has to be at the center of the ecosystem, and then everybody in the ecosystem is actually saying how best to service the customer. So I think if you have that kind of customer centricity, and you understand that ecosystems, I will, you know, you'll on your own, you'll never be as good as an ecosystem. I think you, 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 you nailed it. But it requires, you know, a partnering ethos. You know, and that's what we really like about Snowflake. Such a strong partnering ethos. I still, you know, I keep telling people, you know, if I text or message Chris or Colleen, 
I'll get a response in within 15, 20 minutes. You know, that's invaluable when you're trying to do great things for your joint clients, you know, so. Yeah. Sounds like there's a lot of synergies there around the customer obsession, customer centricity. Absolutely. I think, you know, responsiveness in today's world is, is key, you know. I think the first people to respond, if you respond, even if it's to say, you know what, I hear you, I'm going to get back to you. I think, you know, people love that about you, you know, you show that. It's easy to say customer centric, you know, you, it's difficult to actually practice it in real life. And we, we believe that, you know, for us, responsiveness is the key. You know, we'll respond no matter what time of day or night. And, uh, and we, the other thing is, you know, we'll respond even with, with our partners, right? We, we're not going to respond on our own and then bring everybody else along. We'll be even things like, you know, I don't know this, but I can refer you to a partner who can help you do this. That's also a response. That responsiveness is so critical, especially in this day and age where I think one of the things that was in short supply during COVID, one of the many things is patience and tolerance, right? right on, the, on, on us as consumers in our business lives. So being able to respond, even just to say, we're checking, don't know yet, that builds trust between organizations with customers. Well, yeah, absolutely. In fact, you know, even the first year of the pandemic, we grew nine and a half percent year on year. Uh, in India, we were the fastest growing company that year. And if anybody asked me, why did you grow nine and a half percent when, you know, the, the industry grew at minus one percent, uh, you know, in that financial year. I think it was the speed at which we responded between February and June to client requests. We responded even before, you know, I was on calls till 12.30 in the night working with clients to say, okay, how do we fix this? How do we change this? How do we stop doing something? How do we cut cost? Whatever they needed. And what we did in the first three months actually helped us, or first four months when the first, you know, wave of the pandemic really hit. Actually, clients were like, these guys were on our side when we were, the times were tough. Uh, let's, let's sort of bet on them. And, and, you know, the data business actually grew. And I keep saying this, you know, Whenever a big macro trend hits, when there's more uncertainty, people look to the data because your judgment and experience is no longer applicable. Nobody in the world had any experience or judgment that could be applied in COVID times, right? So you need to now look at the data and say, okay, is the data telling me something that I would never come to know based on my own experience? And I think, you know, this is what I call the real, you know, database decisions is no company in the world will say we don't do it. But I think today's world, we are seeing real-time data decisions being taken. We see it in the supply chain all the time. We see it in you know, how banks are, are processing interest rate rises, et cetera. It's the speed at which they're acting would not be possible without a data-first kind of approach that they're taking. Right, and it has to be real-time these days. It has to be. Every organization, that's no longer nice to have. Yeah. No, you know, and data is getting out of date also so quickly. I mean, in today's world, uh, the, with the war in Ukraine, I think the first thing we realized was that, you know, almost every parameter on commodity, you know, whether it was oil or steel or shipping or whatever, it changed so rapidly that, you know, the only way to predict, you know, many of our clients were not able to, to tell their customers what, when they would be able to deliver products and services or products, especially manufacturing clients. Just because they just didn't know when they would get their materials and get their parts, et cetera. And we use data to say, okay, let's at least establish a base on which, because clients get disappointed more, customers get disappointed when you don't meet a delivery date. So we wanted to say, let's make it more predictable, even in unpredictable times. Mm -hmm. So we're able to manage expectations, we're able to do that you know, better. Without the data, there was no way it would have happened. There was just no way. And frankly for us, Snowflake is the, you know, is the reason, you know, for us, it's our biggest bet in the, in the data space. And that's how, you know, most of the work that we're doing in supply chain, in fact, I'm just headed to a manufacturing, uh, you know, uh, event uh, the, that our team has organized, which, which is uh, with Snowflake on data on uh, cloud for, for manufacturing clients. So we've been slightly behind the curve compared to some of the others, but now seeing the promise and saying, hey, let's go for this. There's a tremendous amount of potential. We're only scratching the surface. We thank you so much thank for joining you. Dave and me on the program, talking about LTI, the power of what you're doing together with Snowflake. We'll let you get to that manufacturing event. I'm yeah, sure they no, are no, looking thank forward you so to much. talk to you. Yeah, no, it was lovely to speak to you. Thank you so, thank much. You so much. Likewise, my pleasure. For our guest and Dave Vellante, this is Lisa Martin signing off from the show floor of Snowflake Summit 22. Day one coverage is complete. Dave and I look forward to seeing you bright and early tomorrow for a jam-packed day two. Thanks so much for watching. Take good care.